Webster. Mr. Webster, I'm here to reassure you that we have a procedure for all sharps and needle stick injuries. Now, I don't want you to worry because we can offer you prophylactic treatment, just as a precaution. But first, I'd like you to tell me how the accident happened. I'm told you work in a hostel for homeless people. Yeah, that's right. I, I went on shift this afternoon and, and things were pretty hectic. Hello, Stanley Street Hostel. Liz speaking. Can I help? Sorry, could you speak up? Oh, you'd like to make a referral. Okay. Have you referred to us before? No. Could I have your name then, please? Good afternoon, Stanley Street Hostel. Dave speaking. Oh, hello there. Um, no, that resident hasn't returned since yesterday. A bit stressed out then, Liz. Yeah, you could say we've been a bit full on. We had to evict someone this afternoon and we haven't had time to clean that room yet. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy to do that. I just haven't done the training or anything. Well, this is an exceptional situation. I've got to get the communications book up to date, then I have to... Stanley Street uh, Hostel... Don't worry, Ben. Any competent person can do it. You just have to remember to be careful and don't forget the stuff. Stuff? What stuff? Yeah, Liz speaking. Can I help? Your national insurance number, please. You'd like to make a referral? stick injuries that happen each year is high but only a small number of these go on to cause infections that become serious illnesses. Needle stick injuries can transmit more than 20 diseases but the main infections that we're concerned about are the blood-borne viruses which are hepatitis A, hepatitis B and HIV. Transmission of these infections does depend on a number of factors such as how deep the injury was, if there was visible blood on the needle, if the needle had been in a vein or an artery. It also depends on the immune system of the injured person as well as the health of the person who'd used the needle before. Hepatitis B and Hepatitis C are more likely to cause infection from needle stick injury than HIV. The relative risks of exposure following a needle stick injury are roughly 1 in 3 for Hepatitis B virus, 1 in 30 for Hepatitis C virus and one in 300 for HIV. Many people infected have no symptoms initially, but they may develop a long-term infection if they're not checked and the infection goes undetected. Hepatitis B and Hepatitis C cause inflammation in the liver and HIV attacks your immune system. Ben, I'd like to know exactly what you did after you received the needle stick injury. I didn't realise it had happened until I saw the blood. And when you eventually realised, what did you do? I held the wound under the tap and, and cleaned it with soap. That's good, but the ideal thing to do with an injury like this is to press the skin around the wound and let it bleed gently. Then hold it under running water. Two things to avoid are to suck the wound or to scrub the wound whilst it's being washed. After washing the area, dry it and cover with a waterproof plaster or dressing. Put the needle responsible for the injury into an empty sharps bin and bring it along to A&E with you. Also, you must make a report of the incident to your employer. Someone affected by a needle stick injury will need a lot of psychological support. It's a very stressful time. It's important to seek urgent medical attention though. Blood tests will be needed initially straight after the injury and also after three months and six months. Medicines to help fight the infection are available and these have to be taken for 28 days after the injury. 
they can reduce the risk of infection by 80%. These may need to be started in the first few hours after the needle stick injury though. Sometimes a vaccination against hepatitis B is also needed, again within 72 hours of the injury. In the case of hepatitis C, weekly injections for 48 weeks can be necessary. Obviously with all this worry, lengthy testing and possible long-term treatment, prevention of needle stick injuries is absolutely vital. Is there anything you don't understand, Ben? Have you got any questions? No, no thanks. I just wish I could turn back the clock, that's all. Hello, Stanley Street Hostel. Liz speaking. Can I help? Sorry, could you speak up? Oh, you'd like to make a referral? OK. Have you referred to us before? No? Could I have your name then, please? Good afternoon, Stanley Street Hostel. Dave speaking. Oh, hello there. Um, no, that resident hasn't returned since yesterday. Oh. A bit stressed out then, Liz. Yeah, you could say we've been a bit full on. We had to evict someone this afternoon and we haven't had time to clean that room yet. Oh, chill out. I can do that for you. But you haven't had the training? Yeah, yeah, I have. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Ben. OK, we're all good to go. Ben, if you can give me five minutes, I'll come down and help. take several months before it's clear whether any infection has been transmitted from the needle stick injury, the exposed person should have safe sex for three months and shouldn't donate blood until all the screening tests are back and all clear. This means the person has several months of worry and medical tests and they may need lengthy treatment with antiviral medication. So the message is avoid needle stick injuries by taking all possible precautions. Prevention really is the key. Thank you.